Hello, I'm Mark Sumner, host of the Channel Chat podcast show, and today I have the pleasure of Sarah Goodchild, the Senior Director of Channel Sales of Picus Security, in the studio. How are we doing, Sarah? I'm very good. How are you? I'm really good. I'm really good. Now, normally, what I normally do is when I get a, a guest in person, I normally look through their LinkedIn profile and think, why have they done this? <laughs> and the first thing I noticed on your profile was Kingston University, a degree in resources and environmental sciences. So okay. let, let's start there. What, what made you pick that, Sarah? I didn't. That's the didn't? answer. So um, I went to an all-girls boarding school in deepest, darkest Somerset, and it was just expected that you went to uni. Probably didn't have good career teachers at the time. Wanted to do like a solid subject, chose geography. Didn't quite do as well as I expected in A-levels. Went through clearing. And that's what I was presented with. The geography, quite straightforward as a degree. I ended up doing something that involved more maths, industrial <laughs> biology, climatology, um, and geography, geology. So it was very varied. Didn't really want to do it. But at the time, it was just, I've got to go to university leaving school got to go and did you have a plan what you're going to do afterwards so because i i noticed as well that you went into the dark side of recruitment and i don't normally have many guests that have a <laughs> recruitment background so you did your degree and then and then became a, a, recruiter. a recruiter yeah so i was uh, like a lot of people after university looking for a job and i actually went to work for a tele sales company called decisions working on the amex account and i started in august worst month to start a job. Everyone's on holiday, no one was picking up the phone. So I started looking for a proper job and actually I applied to Hayes Accountancy personnel. My CV somehow got pushed over into the Montreux side, which was construction. Because I thought actually I like selling, I like people, we'll give this a go. And actually it was a great grounding in sales and I loved there. One of my friends um, who I've known since that day is still a great friend of mine. So. For me, it was a great start for a sales career. It really was. And then over lunch, I noticed we spoke about you work from a call associates, which were down the road they here in Jones Cross. Because I actually got my first job from them in Serena. 1998. So it was a long, long time ago. So you then you carried on your career in recruitment. So tell me about that, how you sort of started there. Yeah, I mean, Hayes was a great grounding. Um, learned a lot. You know, those were the days just as the mobile phones were coming out and you know, had a desktop, you know, a little computer, WebPerfect 6.1. And I learned a lot there. I was actually doing the high end um, in construction. I was doing architecture people. I was doing landscape designers, CAD designers. So it was quite that end rather than, you know, labourers on site. And then I started to evolve and think, okay, what, what should I do next? And actually, Rec to Rec, recruitment for recruitment consultants, was just coming out. Yeah. It was, and it was, it was booming, wasn't it? It was brand new, and uh, I had some good times at McCall Associates. Serena was fantastic, good fun. But, you know, I'm quite ambitious, um, and my motto is, if you're not having fun, move on. So I was looking for the next thing. So I actually went to work for one of my clients um, and worked for them doing construction recruitment again with Kotec. Um, and they just kept evolving. Um, so yeah, I loved recruitment, happy days, got a taste of commission and what the sales process was all about. And actually in that working environment with people, working in a team, learning from others, it was good, good times, loved it. And what made you leave? Because I noticed in your career as well that you suddenly got a job at WebSense. Yeah. What made you leave recruitment? It was timing. <laughs> was it? okay. It's always about time. I wouldn't say I set out with a plan. I, I wasn't happy. I was working for a very small recruitment firm in Reading and I just knew this didn't feel right and I needed to do something else. And a lady there um, called Kate um, said to me, I know this company, I've recruited for them before. Um, you need to get into this thing called IT. And I went, all right, what's that? So she, uh, she gave me the shove uh, to get into IT. So I actually had a conversation um, with a guy called Frank Colgrave, who if anyone's listening to this that worked at WebSense, we all know Frank, he's now retired. He was looking for inside sales um, and it was actually for a different company. And I can't remember the company he was working for at the time, but he said, I think you should go and apply because WebSense is recruiting. So that's what I did. And so, I went as an inside sales rep. So there was no plan of IT? You weren't interested no, in tech? No, no. It was just... Were you interested in sales at that point? Yes, I loved the sales side. Yeah. I think I've been one of those people, I've been very lucky that... My mum always says I'm lucky. Things just 
come into my path, I think, actually, that's a good move for me. Or you just kind of connect with someone, you think that actually, that go that direction. Kind of keeps it agile, yeah. keeps it interesting. And you've been there for a long time, you've been there for 10 years, because I noticed yeah. as well, you had like four or five promotions there, so you'd obviously worked hard and yeah. up the ladder. So tell me about your career there, how you moved up. So I uh, started in inside sales and then managed into team leader with two people working for me, um, great people, and then had the opportunity to do the channel side. Um, and it really opened up for me, okay, this is a different aspect to sales. It's not having, obviously, the customer as the person you're looking after, but all the partners to actually grow the business. And for me, channel, you're a project manager. Mm. You have to work with all different departments in the company. You still have a contribution to make to the business, but actually, I think it's more interesting because it's more varied. And that's what I've always loved about channel is the opportunity to get involved in different parts of the business. You're not just in this space of being the account manager, these are your accounts, this is the country you work in, and that's it. Mm. So I like the variation. Because uh, talking about variations, when I looked at your profile, Sarah, and I said this to you over lunch, yeah. you've got quite an unusual profile that you've done. Yes, you've stuck into cyber, your career, and I, I noticed that. Yeah. But there's been sales, yeah. there's been channel sales, yeah. there's been marketing, there's been a job title that said alliances there's been a <laughs> there's, been, there's been a lot of different job titles which, which is the blend of of, of like i said marketing sales yeah. project management alliances channel why are the different things there's no most people most people will stick to a route but you've, you've had a lot of experiences in that so how has it come about i think again some of it's just been by luck of opportunity of the type of business i've looked at and that's been the role that's come up but for me it's actually been the best thing i could have done because where I'm at now, working for a smaller business, having all that experience behind me, I'm giving the benefit of so much more to a company. So actually getting involved in the channel marketing and the programs, those two kind of always gone hand in hand, you know, building out the enablement. That's always been a big passion of mine, working with that team to make that work. Because the realistic piece about channel is it's a jigsaw puzzle, isn't it? You need all aspects of the sales the enablement, the marketing, the programs to make it work. So actually, I think that makes me super valuable because I have done everything and actually I enjoy it too. You know, I never switch off from the marketing thing and I'm, you know, the team I'm working with now, I probably annoy them a little bit because I do know a little bit about the marketing and what we should do. So I do step in and get involved, but it's just because I want to move fast because I can actually... I'm in region, marketing is not in region, I can help things move along a lot faster. I just love the variation, I mm. really do. Now, we spoke again at lunch about yes. women in technology, and I, I said to you, I looked at your profile and I saw there was a uh, you know, CRN uh, 2017, CRN 2020, yeah. etc. And I said to you that most women I feel uh, in the industry don't apply for jobs that they can definitely do. There's a real reluctance to apply. So when we put out a senior leadership role or, or roles that we're advertising, we don't get many females apply. Now, why why do you think that is? Do you think that do you think it's because they, they need to have a tick list of all everything that's on the on the job spec or whatever it is? Because I get loads of applications from men and they can't even do half the job. So <laughs> what, why why is that from from a female perspective? I think women. Well, I'll speak about myself. I won't say all women. I think you know I'll look at jobs on LinkedIn and you'll think, oh, I can I can't do that bit. So that that's me out. And I think it's just a female thing. We kind of, like we were saying, you've got to tick every box before you think, actually, I can, I can put myself forward with confidence. Sometimes it's that fear of rejection. You don't want to be rejected. Mm. But I just think it's a female thing. We just want to be confident that they, we can do all parts of what's being asked of us. And I don't know. It's just, we're different, aren't we? But we, we, one of the things that we, we, we've been talking about in the channel for the last couple of years is, is getting more of a diverse workforce. Yeah. That's not just obviously gender, but trying to encourage more females to apply for jobs into senior leadership positions. So <laughs> let, let's take you as an example. What made you start, you, you've applied for some senior jobs, you've got yeah. a senior job now. Yeah. What made you apply for them, those jobs, and how did you get on in your career? Because there'll be a lot of people listening thinking, I'd love to have... Sarah's career but maybe they don't they don't want to put themselves forward I think you know I've been fortunate particularly this job where I am now there are a couple of people in the company that I already knew 
So I'd always say, use your network. Absolutely. That's the benefit of getting older, isn't it? Your network gets bigger. Um, Always see where people are. Or if there's a connection that you can actually hook yourself into someone there. Um, I, like I said to you over lunch, I like the challenge of startup. So straight away for me, when I'm looking for a job, a lot of it isn't relevant. Um, I'm not a big, big corporate person, I don't think. I mean, I've never worked in a massive one, but what I love about smaller businesses is the opportunity to influence and be part of the story, to have that touch into senior management, to be able to work with the CEO, to get his vision, to be visible. Um, I like, as I said to you, I like to be the big fish in the little pond. It's more rewarding. And so that kind of channels me what kind of jobs I'll look for. Um, And I love that challenge. So I, like I say, channels a project management role. I get involved with the legal team and the customer success, the support, the training team, if there is one, the marketing, the sales, the SEs. You find your wing men and women in the business that you're at that are going to help you be successful. 